we hit our breakpoint in the timer, and if I inspect this, we can see that this is now a byte property. Like, that is not right. This memory has been freed and given to something else. I have no idea what this byte property is. It's eight, whatever that was, we just potentially corrupted some memory, and unfortunately, we did not crash. That is how this is subtly a terrible problem, in that you can overwrite memory and not even realize you overwrote memory. And so this didn't even manifest in a crash. We just have some bug somewhere else running the game, potentially at this moment. Lambdas can be very unsafe when dealing with asynchronous calls. And so to demonstrate that, I have this simple class here, you test unsafe class, and all it really has is a integer value, and we will increment that value, and we'll start some unsafe timers that can potentially lead to some bad situations. There is also a callback for a specific type of way of binding, but we'll get into that in a moment. So if we look at increment value, all it does is take the value and adds one to it. And I've set up a console command so that we can test this. And when we run this console command, it will call this function, which just instantiates an object and then calls the unsafe timers. Now, the thing about this object is that it is new objected with the world. So there's nothing holding onto this object and it's gonna be garbage collected pretty soon after the object has been created. So I've named that object to GC. So let's see what happens when we do the unsafe timers. So the first thing we do is we get the world and then get a timer manager and set up a timer handle so we can create a timer. If we use the safe lambda version, so this is a CVAR up here. It is CVAR use safe lambda. By default, it's true. We're going to use a safe lambda. It sets a timer, and in that timer, it has a lambda where we log that the timer is up, and then we call increment value. If we use the unsafe, so if this is false, it does effectively the same thing. It creates a timer, has a lambda, and it logs that we, the timer is up, and it tries to increment the value. At the same time, also not looping, so what is the difference? Well, the difference is that in the unsafe one, we're doing create lambda. So we have a timer delegate with create lambda. And in the safe one, we have a timer delegate and we're doing create weak lambda. The difference is that a weak lambda requires an additional argument, which is the object. So in this case, it's just the instance of this class here, test unsafe class. And if the object has been freed, it will not call the lambda for the timer. So when the garbage collector collects this object, this timer won't execute. However, the unsafe one, there's nothing tracking whether the object has been garbage collected. And so this will actually have been freed and potentially given to some other memory. And so this can create a memory stump situation. A memory stump is when memory has been freed, but then written to after it has been freed. And so that's undefined behavior. That memory may be allocated for something else. And so you might be overriding memory in that situation. And so since we have a CVAR here, we can test the difference between these two. Because unfortunately, this is a really subtle bug and you might not notice it. All right, so let's put a breakpoint in both of these logs and we can test out this lambda issue. So if I copy the command to run the test, command start unsafe timers. All right, if we run the test, start unsafe timers, we get the timer manager and create a timer handle. And so we're gonna use the safe lambda first and then we'll switch the CVAR over later to test the other version. So on the safe one, we set up a timer and I've got a breakpoint here. And so after a second, we should hit that timer if the object is still around. And it looks like it was garbage collected. So we'll try it one more time since we got unlucky and continue. And now we hit the timer this time because the timer was invoked before the, the garbage collector had collected this object. And so you see that was safe. The first time the memory was freed and it didn't execute. However, if we use the CVAR to use safe lambda and turn that off, so CVAR use safe lambda zero to turn it off, and then we run the test again. We're gonna go down into the second branch and we have a breakpoint here and continue. And now notice that we hit the breakpoint and this callback. We can inspect this to see if it's actually been freed. And it looks like it's actually still valid. So there's a little trick to force this to be freed. We can go type GC force every frame. So force collect garbage every frame and tab to complete to that. Set that to one, enter. And now if we run the test again, we will step down into the unsafe region and we'll set the timer. And then I will continue. And we hit our breakpoint in the timer. And if I inspect this and go into it, we can see that this is now a byte property. Like 
That is not right. This memory has been freed and given to something else. I have no idea what this byte property is, but it is not the object that we saw before. And so we're about to go in here and increment this value, and we can see that the value is seven. So it's eight, whatever that was. We just potentially corrupted some memory, and unfortunately, we did not crash. That is how this is subtly a terrible problem in that you can overwrite memory and not even realize you overwrite memory. And so this didn't even manifest a crash. We just have some bug somewhere else running in the game, potentially at this moment. And that's why these lambdas are so dangerous, because you can create a bug, and one, you might not hit the garbage collector, so you might, in your testing, not see it. And two, even in a shipping build, it might start corrupting memory and make a problem appear somewhere else, and someone will get a crash reporter for that and go look, and the code will look completely safe to them, and so the memory values will seem right and they can't find an issue and that's because it wasn't their code that was overwriting memory it was your code overwriting their memory and so this is a very terrible bug and you really should watch out for it at basically all times using a lambda with asynchronous stuff and so the simple way is to just use create weak lambda and pass in your object as the this and so if we switch over to the safe version and let's go ahead and stop this and rerun it since we've corrupted some memory so we should still be collecting garbage every frame so if i run it use unsafe timers. We'll go down here, we set the timer, but we never get our callback. And now sometimes you don't have a single object to bind to for the create weak lambda. And in those situations, you can use tweak object pointer. And so if I run the test again, now we're still collecting garbage every frame, so this is immediately going to be invalidated. So what I've done is I've created a tweak object pointer of this type, called weak this, and I assigned it to this. And then I set up a timer, and I just use create lambda, so I'm not using the safe one, I'm using the unsafe one. However, inside of the lambda, inside of the lambda, I make sure that weak this is still valid. And weak this is actually captured as part of the lambda capture in addition to capturing this. And so if I put a breakpoint right here and continue, we just waited a second, and now we hit our timer, so at some point later. Now if I inspect weak this, we can see that it's stale. The garbage collector has collected this. So we are gonna log, but instead of incrementing the value, we're going to detect this was garbage collected, and we're going to step over it and basically print that it was not valid. And so why I prefer this to the other one? Well, the other one's fine, except for sometimes you might have multiple objects that you need all of them to still be in scope or correct and not freed before you do any logic. And so you can check all of the weak captures to make sure they're all valid and then execute this. And since this is all in the same frame as what garbage will run, that will be, end up being safe. There's no race condition there as long as when this executes, everything is valid. Additionally, you may now be concerned that when you set a timer, it's going to operate on freed or stale memory. Fortunately, you're safe. So if we look here, I have an example of a regular timer binding. So we have a timer delegate, and we create a U object binding for the object this, and we give it a specific callback function. And then in that callback function, we just log and increment the value. And so if I put a breakpoint in here, and a breakpoint on where we set this timer, and I run the test again. And I step down to here. And so what I'm going to do is set up a regular timer with the create U object. And we're still garbage collecting every frame, so we should never get this callback. And it's been a second, we didn't get the callback. So let's turn off garbage collect every frame. And then run the test again. Go down here, we set the timer and we got the callback because the garbage collector hasn't ran yet. And so if we step into here, and so stepping through that, we see that there's no issues. The object has not yet been freed. So if we look at this, we still see a valid this pointer. So high level is you don't have to worry about the regular create your object bindings, but you really need to worry about your lambdas and make sure your lambdas are safe. Hope that helps. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and until next time.